welcome to the first webinar of this series. Uh, you see here the agenda for the next few weeks uh, with uh, some, I think, very interesting topics about um, all aspects of debugging with uh, tools from PLS. Uh, today, the webinar will um, give you a brief overview about our products and what you can expect from um, our universal debug engine, our key product for debugging and trace. And um, it is a kind of appetizer for the following webinars. Um, they will, uh, or we will um, focus on more detailed aspects of multi-core debugging, multi-core tracing, scripting, um, and so on for mainly Oryx, but also for ARM Cortex-A and R series of microcontrollers. Okay, let's get started. Okay, um, today PLS tools for debugging and trace, that is the topic for this uh, first webinar here. And uh, I'd like to introduce our universal debug engine, uh, which is a complete solution for debugging, test and trace. Uh, my name is Jens Braunes, so that's a picture um, of mine. And yeah, welcome to this webinar. Okay, um, who we are, uh, PLS development tools, or the German word is um, PLS Programmierbare Logik und Systeme GmbH is based in uh, Germany. We are a company uh, which is uh, 30 years on the market with um, uh, debugging and trace tools. Uh, and we provide um, yeah, dev uh, software development tools uh, for um, different types of microcontrollers, uh, multi-core uh, embedded systems and SOCs. So let me introduce um, our key product, the Universal Debug Engine, a little bit uh, in details. Okay, um, the Universal Debug Engine uh, is uh, one of the leading frameworks for debugging test and trace um, on the market for microcontrollers, embedded systems, and uh, multi-core microcontrollers. Uh, we provide a complete, efficient, and easy to use um, software and as a hardware part, uh, which is responsible for connecting um, evaluation boards or um, your product, your embedded system, uh, like um, ECUs, um, or other control units. Uh, the uh, UDE uh, is um, a complete workbench containing of two parts. We have a software part, which uh, runs on your Windows PC, uh, which provides all the functionalities to um, give you an overview of the state of your embedded system, uh, of your application running on the embedded system, uh, and also possibilities and functions for runtime analysis. And then we have a hardware part, which is responsible, responsible for uh, connecting uh, to a embedded system, a microcontroller, a microcontroller board, or a um, custom hardware system like a, a control unit, a engine control unit, or whatever. Uh, the UDE uh, or our market segment that we are focusing on is mainly the field of automotive and industrial. Uh, so you will see on one of the next slides or on the next slide uh, which controllers we support in that market. Um, the tool is for debugging on real hardware. That means uh, we connect directly to the microcontrollers or embedded systems, but uh, we are not um, uh, focused on that uh, exclusively. Uh, we have also support for simulators as a virtual target. The uh, um, access devices we have, the debugger hardware, uh, if you like, um, is able to uh, connect to all the um, supported microcontrollers with all the uh, provided interfaces. Uh, that means JTAG, it is the uh, most common one, but also uh, vendor specific uh, interfaces like DAP uh, from Infineon, SWD from the ARM world, and so on. 
um, but not only these um, dedicated debug interfaces are supported, uh, we have also support for CAN uh, or uh, CAN-based um, interfaces that can be used also as a debug channel, for example, XCP or XCCPL, which are um, which provides the possibility to tunnel the debug information that we need in the debugger uh, over CAN or other interfaces. And then for the tracing, we also have support for uh, different types of trace interfaces uh, from different vendors, uh, parallel trace interfaces, uh, which comes with uh, some um, ARM Cortex-based devices or power architecture devices, uh, Nexus from the power architecture world, uh, Aurora is uh, the one of the latest and um, uh, high bandwidth interfaces based on the serial um, protocol and HSSTP from the ARM world, which is quite similar to Aurora. Um, in the uh, um, yeah, in the world of um, embed systems, uh, we know a lot of um, processor architectures, um, core architectures from different vendors. Um, we support a broad range of that, but not um, a very broad. Uh, so we are going more into the depths in uh, for these microcontrollers. Um, PLS is very strong and we started with Infineon. Uh, we have a very strong support for uh, the latest Oryx multi-core devices, um, first generation uh, TC20, uh, TC2XX and third, uh, the second generation TC3XX uh, systems. But also for the older tri-cores, uh, TC17XX uh, and TC11XX also for the ARM-based XMCs and as well as for the legacy devices from Infineon uh, from the XC and XE family. Um, also, we have um, a support for um, the multi-core systems based on ARM from NXP and ST. Uh, the latest devices are the S32, uh, G, S and V from NXP as well as the Stellar-based uh, or the Stellar family based on Cor Cortex R52 from ST and also from the Renesas world and also uh, a couple of uh, ARM based controllers, mainly Cortex M uh, and uh, devices from ST and so on. Um, that are devices um, for the industrial world. Okay. Then uh, let me introduce the, the hardware part of um, PLS tools of the Universal Debug Engine. Um, we have a family of three devices, which we call Universal Access Devices. Um, the, um, the basic base device that we provide for basic debugging and entry level on-chip trace and also for um, production flash programming is the UD2 Pro, uh, which is the most cost efficient device in our portfolio. And then we have a, we call it all round device for uh, debugging and trace. Um, the UD2 Next, which is also interesting for remote debugging, um, if your target is not located uh, at your uh, desk or in your lab, um, so you can use this device uh, in a uh, LAN network uh, as well. And um, for high-end trays uh, with high bandwidth, um, and with a lot of trace information that has to be captured, um, we provide the UAD 3 Plus, uh, which is also uh, able to, uh, for remote debugging as well as for multi-target debugging. So let's have a look into these devices a little bit in more detail. Um, the first device, the UAD 2 Pro, is, uh, I already said, it's the base device for debugging. Um, it combines um, traditional debug interfaces like JTAG uh, or others. Uh, I mentioned 
these here on this slide are with a CAN interface. So you can use this device also um, if you have um, no access anymore, uh, physical access anymore to the um, uh, control unit, for, for example, if it's, it's, uh, is it, is it a closed um, control unit, for example, then you can use uh, the CAN interface to tunnel the debug information. Uh, and it provides uh, also support for um, on-chip trace buffers. That means uh, there's no trace memory inside this device. You have to use devices like the Aurix emulation devices to capture the trace into the uh, on-chip trace memory and read the recorded trace information uh, via the uh, debug interface. Um, to connect this device to your host PC uh, where the UDE is running, uh, you have an USB interface. Uh, for all our devices, um, we have a standardized uh, debug adapter concept. Um, these adapters um, are connected to our UDE devices of the UDE family uh, and um, adapts the debug signals and also the physical connectors uh, for each supported microcontroller architecture and evaluation boards. Um, as an option, uh, you have also the possibility to replace the standard debug adapter by a, a Galvanic isolated adapter, um, which is interesting for customers um, uh, use uh, uh, developing in a harsh electrical environment uh, like for um, uh, electrical inverters or converters etc. So the next device in our family is the UD2 Next uh, which uh, provides a high performance debug access via all the supported debug interfaces. You see here uh, Again, the use debug adapter, it's the same as it can use it for the UD2 Pro. Um, it has, in addition uh, to the standard debug uh, connector, a, sub, uh, a ASC and a CAN interface uh, using the RS232 uh, connector uh, to um, uh, allow also debugging uh, via the CAN bus. Uh, as an option, uh, this device um, provides uh, plug-in modules or can be extended by plug-in modules for different types of trace interfaces. Uh, internally, it has a 512 megabyte trace memory, so you do not need any on-chip trace memory on your controller. That's uh, interesting, for example, in the ARM Cortex world. Um, and allows with the trace modules um, either parallel trace up to 12 bit and 250 megabit per second or a serial trace uh, using for example this um, adapter or this plug-in module shown here um, while the Aurora is up to 1.25 uh, gigabit per second. Uh, to connect this device to your host PC we provide a USB 3 interface as well as a gigabit Ethernet, so you can easily um, plug in this device in your uh, company network and uh, get access uh, using um, your IP address of that device uh, to your target. That's uh, at the moment a very interesting feature um, if you are in home office and uh, you have no target at home. Um, then you can use that device uh, via your um, uh, VPN, for example, to access the target on your um, desk in your office. Uh, for that device, we provide also a so-called range extender that is a um, cable and an additional adapter um, that bridges uh, distances up to two meters between the, the debug box, the UAD itself, and the target. That is uh, very interesting for, for example, um, um, test racks where you have no um, enough physical space uh, to put the UAD 
uh, near to the target, so you can bridge um, or you can uh, place the UED outside of your test track and um, connect uh, only with the very small footprint uh, adapter here uh, directly to the target. Um, the uh, range extender can be combined with all the standard debug adapters that we provide and also with all the galvanic isolated debug adapters. So they are target independent. The uh, last device in the, um, yeah, the uh, high-end device uh, that we provide is the UAD3+, Plus, which is composed of uh, two components. It's a base device, which contains uh, up to four gigabyte trace memory. Um, and uh, attached to this base device, um, we have a debug pot, which handles the uh, typical debug or the, the needed debug signals uh, to the target. And we have also attached here in this picture a trace pot um, for high bandwidth trace um, to this Oryx board here. Um, we have trace pots available for parallel trace um, with 32-bit uh, in maximum and 500 megahertz and a serial trace interface uh, which provides support for up to four lanes at uh, 3.125 gigabits, uh, gigabits per second um, for the um, current available Aurora uh, trace interfaces that we know from the Oryx world and also for other devices like power architecture devices. On the right side, you see the same setup for parallel trace uh, with the same debug interface here and the trace pot for parallel trace. Um, the uh, UD3 Plus provides also um, a high performance debug access uh, to all the supported or all the available debug interfaces. Um, we have a host interface to your PC uh, using USB 2 or gigabit Ethernet and or also um, here a legacy firewire. Um, the hardware setup it, uh, it's a bit more complicated. Um, you can connect um, either uh, the debug pot uh, to the base device using a uh, PCI Express cable and the debug pod provides um, itself two debug connectors for two targets. So uh, with four uh, pods here that can be connected to the base device and uh, two debug interfaces per pod, uh, you can connect uh, in parallel up to eight targets. That is especially interesting for a production line flash programming. And also, uh, for um, debugging of um, multi-target uh, uh, systems. Uh, the trace setup looks like that for, uh, and as an example, I have chosen here the setup for the uh, Aurora trace. Um, here in this case, the debug pod can be connected directly to the, the target debug connector uh, that is shown here. Um, but if the Aurora on the target provides also debug pins, um, that is, um, for example, the case for the Aurix, then you can connect the debug pod um, to the trace pod. That is this direction here. Um, and the trace pod um, route, routes then the JTAG signals uh, via the, the, the trace cable to the target. So that uh, saves uh, one cable to the target, and it's a quite interesting solution. For the um, UD3 Plus, we provide also a, a so-called multi-target uh, debug solution. Um, at the moment, only for, for the Aurix. Um, uh, that the reason for that is that uh, here, a specific uh, hardware 
um, support is required. Um, the key feature for, for that multi-target debugging is if you have uh, two Oryxes uh, used in your system, um, for example, uh, if you need redundancy uh, in terms of safety, uh, if you have an application that should meet AC level D or C level 4, um, or if you need additional computing power uh, that is provided by a second MCU, or if you want to extend the number of the available uh, peripherals that are provided by the Aurix, for example, um, then uh, it could be interesting for you to put a second uh, Oryx device on your on your system. And for that, uh, you need specific uh, debug support. Um, and this specific debug support we provide with synchronous stop, synchronous uh, signal stepping and restart of the two Oryx microcontrollers. And uh, here, um, a piece of hardware is required from our side uh, to provide this synchronization, and that is the multi aurix debug adapter. Uh, it looks like this is a picture of that, and this is a schematic a view of how it is connected to your target. The target is on the right side, and on the left side, this is the debug pot. Here, uh, the UD3 Plus base device is connected, and you use uh, the, both of the debug connectors um, for the uh, both um, debug uh, ports or debug connectors on your on your target system and uh, you need an additional uh, trigger uh, or additional trigger lines to the target um, for make sure that you make sure um, that you can use the synchronization mechanism that we provide uh, next week, I will show you an example uh, for this setup here uh, and how it works. Okay, then uh, let me um, show you the software part of uh, the UDE um, debug framework uh, and some interesting basic features and some interesting features. Um, a lot of the uh, features I will show uh, are uh, detailed more in the next um, few weeks in a separate uh, webinars. So it's, it's a kind of appetizer, what I'm showing now. Um, UDE is um, a framework which is uh, very easy to use. So we have a lot of customers that um, can use the UDE without any um, any uh, training. Um, we provide a uh, getting started with the software and from the getting started uh, you learn that, that is uh, very straightforward uh, to set up the debugger uh, for a specific target and for a specific, specific target application. Um, we have a modern, we provide a modern user interface uh, with a modern uh, window management, including tapped windows, dockable windows, floating windows, and also uh, toolbars that can be uh, tailored to your needs. Um, and uh, the software behind this, or the software architecture behind this, uh, is uh, developed in that way that we are, can perfectly scale to uh, state-of-the-art multi-core architectures and also for upcoming new devices very easily and very fast. And we also support very, um, very heterogeneous architectures. Um, you may know that the Oryx, for example, uh, is a kind of heterogeneous multi-controller architecture. We have um, up to six uh, tri-core cores, but we have also a HSM core, which is the hardware security module um, that is also supported by the UDE, but also the GTM, the generic timer module, which is a completely different um, um, 
core architecture um, coming from Bosch uh, to provide uh, a lot of um, high performance uh, timer analysis and also providing signal generation, etc. Um, easy to use means and that um, we provide a very um, a, a interface that guides you, for example, through the setup process for the workspace. The workspace is the debug session. Uh, so we provide also predefined target configurations for almost all available evaluation boards and also for uh, customer boards uh, that can be used um, to uh, provide information to the debugger which target is connected, uh, which cores are connected, which target interface is used, which um, debugger hardware, which UAD is used. And also you can easily select or deselect the course that you want to debug. So you need no additional scripting knowledge uh, or something like that to set up uh, the debug session and uh, to flash or program your application to the target. The workspace is persistent. That means um, you can save it. Um, and uh, keep it for the next day. Uh, so it contains all the settings uh, for the target connection as well as all the settings of the user interface. So you can uh, left off um, your work uh, and continue uh, at the same point at the next day. Uh, you can also transfer this workspace to another PC, which is also very interesting um, in uh, uh, larger companies. Um, where you have a different um, um, different um, colleagues uh, working on different topics, um, for example, developing, testing, uh, and so on. And um, you can also provide this workspace to them uh, very easily without any need for adapting something. Uh, we provide a, uh, or we have a real multi-core debug solution here, uh, which is um, very unique on the market because um, we have not a core-centric view to the target, but a system-centric view to the target. That means um, all the target uh, cores are uh, available in one common user interface. You need no separate debugger instances, instances and um, to get a very easy uh, overview of your target systems. All the windows are colored, uh, so you can see very easily um, which window belongs to which core. Uh, we provide synchronized debugging, that means run control, braking, stepping, um, go again. Uh, we provide also multi-core breakpoints and also a loading of multi-core or multi-program applications. That means multiple L files for, for the course or even multiple L files for the whole system. Uh, but uh, this is a very, uh, yeah, uh, a topic that goes beyond the time that we have for today. So. Uh, we decided um, to have an own webinar for that, uh, which is held next week, same day, uh, same uh, time uh, on uh, next Thursday. Um, that is a slide um, that is kind of uh, talking about a smartphone and mention uh, the telephone function. That is the typical uh, view, or the, these are the typical views that you expect from all the debuggers. So all the information that you want to see is uh, are available in UDE. Um, maybe peripheral registers are very interesting in the world of embedded systems, 
because uh, all the peripherals are controlled um, by its own register set. Uh, we provide this in a very uh, user-friendly way, so you will see all the bit fields um, and additional to that um, all the uh, also textual information describing the values uh, that are in the bit field. Um, in addition to these textual information, we provide also uh, charts that can be used to visualize, uh, for example, uh, memory allocations and variables over time, uh, and um, as well as visualize our values from memory. Um, that is a window or a chart that shows you on the X axis, for example, the memory location. Uh, we have here an, an array, uh, a field of, of, um, of values here. And uh, over these values or over these indices, uh, we um, can show you, can show the values uh, over the memory locations on the x-axis and the value itself on the y-axis. Uh, that is also a um, traditional debug functionality, uh, breakpoints setting in code or in, in data, um, uh, centralized controlled um, by a centralized window. That is a, a new feature in the, in the new release of the UDE that we have a centralized uh, breakpoint uh, window for all the cores. And um, we support also the uh, hardware breakpoints that are um, based on the uh, on-chip debug functionality of the target, as well as uh, software breakpoints. Software breakpoints are only available in RAM-located applications. Okay, that is um, how it looks like to debug a, in your code. You break, can set breakpoints, you can single stepping, you see uh, by single stepping um, like this uh, with a yellow shadow uh, where it came from um, up to five steps. Um, you can look back um, and see um, what was the, the the instruction or the the statement flow here in debugging? Um, UDE, UDE contains also a flash programming tool, which is also available as a standalone tool and sells by a PLS. Um, this provides uh, all the flash programming um, for bringing your application to the target as well as specific support for uh, specific devices uh, and also uh, an interface for uh, automating flash programming that is um, more or less for the standalone version here uh, also for again programming uh, that means for uh, programming up to eight targets in parallel um, and also um, special interfaces like K-Line, CAN, BSL and so on. And finally, trace support. Um, trace support is um, available as um, additional license and uh, provides you the possibility to do trace-based debugging to find bugs uh, without um, um, stopping the target, I look back in time, um, and also do some trace-based measurement or trace-based analysis, runtime analysis like profiling, um, core graph analysis, um, and performance analysis and even code coverage. And uh, finally, um, there are plugins available for different types of uh, operating systems, um, like for um, a number of uh, Arthos's uh, newest ones are Safe Arthos, Free Arthos, as well as uh, PXROS HR from from Hitech, and also for 
um, other popular um, artists, uh, artists that we find in the automotive and industrial world. And also for Autosar Classic, we have support uh, with a plug-in that provides, um, on one hand, uh, the information about the running operating system uh, based on the uh, so-called ORTI file that is, uh, comes out from the build process um, and also um, provides trace of um, the executed tasks and runnables um, based on, a, for example, Oryx emulation device. And with the trace you can um, export or export trace information, pre-processed trace information also to third-party tools for a more sophisticated um, visualization and also for runtime analysis and time measurement uh, like we have it for QuantView from uh, our partner Inquan. And finally, um, UDE uh, can be a script, that means remote controlled using a open software API, uh, which is part of the standard license of UDE. There is no additional fee. Uh, to use this uh, feature here, we support external and internal scripts, um, macros, uh, maybe term that you are familiar with, and also to connect the party tools to UDE. Um, the unique feature here is that with um, the base technology, a Microsoft Com, Common Object Model, uh, we have no propriety scripting language that we that we provide. Uh, you can use uh, every script language that you like uh, and that you are familiar with. Um, typical examples and very popular are Python, Perl. Uh, even Windows PowerShell, JavaScript, and uh, some of the users um, still use uh, Visual Basic script. So all these scripting languages can be used to remote control the debugger. Um, and again, uh, I will show you some examples in one of the following webinars here. Uh, also, uh, you can write your own .NET applications. Uh, as well as um, C++ applications to connect to the debugger functions and um, maybe uh, write your own test tools, for example, or use test tools uh, like TESI, um, which is uh, also uh, provided by, by Hitex. And uh, finally, I'd like to show you a real, yeah, running UDE, um, showing a subset of the features. Um, on the top you see features that um, are using the debug interface uh, to an Oryx um, TC39 uh, device. Um, you see real-time uh, watches on the right side, um, real-time watching on the registers on the peripheral registers with all the uh, mentioned textual information and also uh, the graphical representation and on the bottom line some um, use cases based on the trace interface that we have on this device here. Um, executed, instru uh, executed functions over the time, a, a trace of two cores uh, in parallel as well as code coverage analysis. Okay, this should be a short appetizer um, for the next webinars.